All right, Algebra 1B students. Welcome to part 3 of lesson 12.3. Today we are going to move a little bit beyond finding measures of the center, uh, like mean, median, and mode. And we are instead going to look at measures of the uh, dispersion or how spread out a certain data set is. Okay, So uh, how spread out our, our data is can be given by what is called the range of a data set. The range of a set of data is the difference between the highest data point and the lowest. So all we have to do really is subtract when we get there. So range is actually something that's very easy to find. Uh, but you'll see in your practice problems that they'll say something like this where uh, we have this problem here about the closing price in dollars of two stocks on five days in February. Okay, And they want to know what are the range and the mean of each set of data. And then we're going to use the re result to compare these two stocks or compare these two data sets. Okay? So we have stock A, and its five-day ending dollar amounts are 25, 30, 30, 47, and then back down to 28. So if I want to find the mean uh, dollar amount for that stock at the end of these five days, I just follow my usual mean formula, which says to add all these uh, things up and then divide that all by 5. And what I end up with is $32. So the mean of stock A's dollar values at the end of these days is $32. Okay. Then I have stock B over here uh, where my daily values are 34, 28, 31, 36, and another 31. If I add all of those up and divide that by 5, uh, funny enough, I actually get $32 again. So both of these stocks have the same average value, average dollar amount. Uh, but when we start to look at the range of these data sets, things get to be very, very different. Okay, Because uh, for stock A, the highest value points, the highest dollar value is here, $47, and the lowest is here, $25. So if I want to find the range of these five data points, I just take 47, subtract the 25, and end up with a range of $22 between the highest and lowest. Okay, Relatively high, as we'll see, compared to stock B. Stock B's highest stock value is right here at $36 and the lowest is here at $28. So if I want the range, again, I just take those two, the highest and the lowest, and I subtract them. 36 minus 28 gives me a range grand total of $8 between the highest and the lowest. Okay. So obviously, although these two stocks had the same average value, they certainly have very different uh, ranges, or, or stock A is much more spread out than stock B. So if I'm going to compare these two stocks, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say both stocks have the same average or mean dollar value, but stock A is much more spread out, higher range, than stock B. So if I want to compare these two data sets, that is what I'm going to say. They have the same average dollar value. Both are 32, but stock A has a much higher range, much more spread out than stock B has or stock B is. Okay. So in order to compare range, uh, just talk about one being more spread out than the other. And finding range, as I mentioned, is very, very easy. Okay. Uh, if you have questions about finding range or, or using it to compare two data sets, make sure to make a note to ask me in class tomorrow. But um, we also need to look at how we compare two data sets by their measures of center. And you will see potentially some practice problems on uh, who has a higher standard. And they'll talk about having a higher standard for being in the top half of the quiz scores. Okay, One thing that we need to know about the top half of the quiz scores 
is that we are instantly talking about the median. Okay? Whenever you see anything about the top half of quiz scores, we are talking about the median. Okay, top half means median. So if we have these two uh, sets of data, these, these two classes of quiz scores between 1 and 6, and we want to compare who has a, a higher standard for being in the top half, we want to look at who has a higher median. Okay. Now we look at median by canceling out uh, data points until we get to the middle. right? So obviously in class A, I can cancel out these three 1s with these three 6s. I can cancel out these twos with these fives, and then I can start canceling out the threes with the fours, and I end up right here with these two values. Okay, so these two values, three and four, are right uh, in the middle of my class. So I'll find the median by finding the average of three and four, which of course is 3.5. So 3.5 is my median there, and I can go through the same process on the other side and cancel the 1 and the 2 with these first two 6s, cancel the two 3s with the next two 6s, and then start canceling 4s with 6s, and now I'll start canceling 4s with 5s, and obviously now I have these three values, but they're all 5s, so if I cancel this one with this one, my middle is obviously a 5. So my median here is 5, and my median over here is 3.5. So class B, in order to be in the top half, we would have to uh, be at a score of 5. But in class A, we'd only have to be at a score of 3.5 to be in the top half of the quiz scores. Okay? So certainly, class B has a higher standard for being in the top half. Because they... Uh, need a higher score to be at the median. So median goes with the top half of quiz scores. So hopefully we feel okay now comparing two data sets based on center and based on spread or range, how spread out they are. If you have questions about it, please make a note to ask me in class tomorrow. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Have a wonderful night.